Refuges for Victim Amazon Amerindians and Inhabitants of the Amazon Forest, 2. Why Refuges and Who Needs Refuges, 2. Too rosy and incomplete picture of the situation of the Amazon forest. In general the media talks about not much else than deforestation and destruction by fires of the Amazon forest. For the media around 26% of the forest is considered as deforested, and for the media cattle ranching in the Brazilian Amazon is the primary cause of such deforestation and destruction, accounting for about 80% of all deforestation in the region. While this could be very well true, we need to be aware that any monoculture agriculture is worse than cattle ranching for the climate and Amazon forest. Further cattle ranching allows the presence of trees or even forest and agroforest, potential nesting places for macaws, and other wild animals, which are real distributors of seeds and cause of natural regeneration, this since a minimum cover by trees is beneficial for cattle ranching, while this is certainly not the case for monoculture agriculture. Recently there were talks about promoting the transformation of cattle ranching into agriculture, the pressure to do so will have gotten higher after the climate disaster and consequent climate migrations in and from RS, Brazil. While the consensus percentage of deforestation probably is close to the truth, this above simple statement that only 26% of the forest is in a bad situation and that only cattle ranching is responsible or guilty, is a dangerous understatement, creates a false security and a too rosy picture that misleads, and as such is one of the major threats to humanity and existence in general. It could make people assume that there is enough forest left for the Amerindians to exist without threats and that this forest will not irreversibly collapse, as long as persons do not eat meat and blame persons that do eat meat, this again is a dangerous understatement. This makes it rather easy for humans to claim it is not them who is responsible, guilty, like the ones that do not eat meat that comes from the Amazon, or that the statement is wrong or at least too simple, and it is too simple, and those that do eat meat will guard themselves this way too easily against responsibility and or guilt. So nothing ever changes, nor ever will change, and even the supposed problems, that are an extreme understatement of all the problems, will never be solved, not even an action plan will be produced, let alone practiced by all or enough humans. Any divisive and responsibility evading collective behavior will ever more make more people need to migrate and seek refuge elsewhere for one or another or even combinations of reasons. Vegans and vegetarians and monocultures of soy. Probably most young people honestly believe that vegans and vegetarians are right and do no wrong, at all, and that meat eaters are totally wrong and guilty for all problems. To start with, few people do only eat meat, and 5 out of 6 vegans will in their lifetime start eating meat for health reasons. Most or many vegans and vegetarians think that not eating meat solves, all, and this causes a false security. For at least part of them it will seem enough to say that they do not eat meat, which is the truth at that particular moment, because consensus seems to wrongly think this is indeed enough. This false security could be convenient for them, and it is even more convenient for business as usual, because the rich and powerful can make most and more easy money with the production of non-meat food and surely promote young people to think consuming non-meat is enough or even the uppermost one can do. Meat production is much more in the hands of families and small-scale initiatives than the production of non-meat that is in the hands of big agro and big industry that gives support to monoculture agriculture etc. So the rich and powerful will support the vegans and vegetarians to think they are, the only ones that are, right and do enough, especially if they blame the non-vegans and the non-vegetarians. The circle is round again and nothing ever changes, nor ever will change, and even the supposed problems, that are an extreme understatement of all the problems, will never be solved, not even an action plan will be produced, let alone practiced by all or enough humans, on top of all this nobody even seems to question the absence of any form of, effective, action plan. Vegans and vegetarians could do better, but, also, do not do enough, and consequently are not right, enough, and worse they have their clear share in the destruction of the Amazon forest, the genocide of the Amerindians and the climate challenges they fear so much. And that is also why there is no action plan and nothing will be solved. Nobody seems to really care that there is no action and that there is no solution without an action plan to reach that action and effective solution. We will later explain why they still damage the Amazon forest and the Amerindians. Further non-veganism or non-vegetarianism, but monoculture of soy etc. is even worse for the soil, climate and Amerindians than cattle ranching is, especially when compared with intact forest or enriched agroforests. Veganism or vegetarianism in the former century most probably would not cause or cause little damage to the Amazon forest and the Amerindians. But most veganism or vegetarianism in the actual world most probably seriously damages the Amazon forest, the Amerindians, and the climate, challenges. Not vegans and not vegetarians and getting rid of eventual guilt. For many not vegans and not vegetarians it is enough to say that they do not eat meat from the Amazon forest, 
this while monoculture of soy, etc., is even worse for the soil and climate than cattle ranching is, or when compared with intact forest or enriched agroforests. Veganism or vegetarianism support neither of them, while ADE agroforest clearly does. We will later explain why the non-meat eaters and non-Amazon meat eaters still damage the Amazon forest and the Amerindians. Extreme floods and calamities all over the planet. The relentless march of climate challenges etc. is leaving its mark on nations far and wide. At this very moment, places as far apart as China, Afghanistan, Indonesia and Brazil, present refugees from floods, etc. To solve climate challenges it is not enough to pressure the industry to decrease carbon dioxide emissions, let alone that this would solve all problems or the perfect storm, we do not even recognize what composes it, and how it is built up. Most carbon emissions are demand-driven, and demand is not even in the hands of the industry, at most they can manipulate it a bit. This is video 2 of this series of videos. Please subscribe and click for a related video. Thank you very much for watching and passing the link of this video and other videos to others.